I always say blame it on the tents. <laughs> uh, uh, I mean, even after at Pleasant Mountain Methodist Church, we had built a building for several summers, and it, we had to put up a tent to hold a revival in it because you couldn't be saved in a building. Yeah. You had to be saved in a tent. Yes. Yep. And, and, uh, and, of course, um, those um, summer revival meetings were the best entertainment in town. <laughs> Everybody came. <laughs> Everybody came. Uh, so um, I take it that, that that way of life is pretty much gone. Yes. But uh, it, it gave the impression that, first of all, you needed to be convicted of your sin. And the evangelist was very graphic in describing your sin. And then once you were ready to confess you were a sinner, then you could experience the salvation that was there. And a lot of good evangelists would also be very good at portraying the tortures of hell. Uh -huh, so right, conviction right. of sin, tortures of hell, yeah. then. Right. Yeah. And, and uh, I mean, there was a deep theological problem with that. And the deep theological problem is, is sin is a theological achievement. You only know it on your way out of it. So uh, the idea that you need to be convinced you're a sinner in order to come to salvation is getting it backwards. Mm -hmm. By being saved in Christ, you then are able to have some intimation of what it means to be a sinner. Yeah. And that's the school of discipleship? That's the school of discipleship for sure, yeah. right. So, I mean, the, that the tents made sin too uh, interesting. <laughs> and it's exactly um, that Christians are saved from the narcissistic fascination with our sin. Yeah.